Good morning. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> Got a little excited there. Okay, anyway, my name is Whitney Nicely, and I buy houses. I teach people how to buy houses, and today I've broken it down into 10 steps for you. So let's talk about these 10 steps. 10 steps. That's all it takes. 10 steps. Uh, it's less than an AA intervention. 10 steps to buying houses. All right, so the first thing you got to do is you got to talk. You got to start flapping your jaw everywhere you go. You got to be in the grocery store talking. You got to be in the church talking. You got to talk to anybody and everybody. You go get your hair done. You got to be talking. You get your nails done. You got to be talking. Anybody, everywhere you go, you've got to be talking and telling people that you buy houses. The second thing you got to do is you've got to ask for leads. Okay, and it's very simple. Write this down. All right. While you're talking to people, you need to say, don't just word vomit out on them, but you need to say, hey, do you know somebody that wants to get rid of a house? That's it. That will open the floodgates to them starting just to confess everybody and anybody that they know that might be ready to get rid of a house. All right. Hey, do you know anybody that wants to get rid of a house? Do you know anybody that has a house they don't want anymore? That's it. You have to ask for the leads. Now, if you do that, if you think about how many people you talk to on a daily basis, and none of us live like in a closet. Even when you go to the office, you have people that you interact with. You have people in the drive through that you interact with. You have people when you pick up the kids from school that you interact with. There are tons of people in your life. So if you will take a challenge, from me today to start telling 10 people a day, 10 steps, 10 people, okay? Tell 10 people every single day that you buy houses and open up the conversation to saying, hey, do you know anybody who wants to sell a house? If you will do that 10 times a day, you won't need any other marketing. So don't tell me it's too expensive. I know you can flap your mouth, okay? All right. Third thing is you have to follow up on these leads, okay? These 10 people are going to start giving you addresses. They're going to start giving you names. They're going to give you phone numbers. They're going to give you leads, hot, off-market leads that nobody else knows about. And it's your job to follow up on the leads. Maybe you need to drive by the house. Maybe you need to call the seller. Maybe you need to, um, you know, get their address. Maybe you need to do something, but you need to follow up on that lead. If you are out there telling people that you buy houses and you are asking for leads, you darn sure better follow up on those leads. Okay. Um, fourth thing you got to do, I got notes up here. The fourth thing that you've got to do is you've got to make offers. You have to make an offer. If you're telling people you buy houses, you're asking for leads, you're following up, then the fourth thing you have to do is you have to make an offer. And I don't care if you're standing in the grocery store and you're talking to the cashier and she tells you that there's a house at 123 Main Street and you need to go buy it, right there on the spot, tell her you'll give her $1,000 for it. Ask her how much she owes. Tell her you'll give her what she owes on it. All right, then you can go through the rest of it, but you have to start making offers, even if they're crappy offers, even if they're high or low, you have to start somewhere. You have to start making some offers. Verbal offers are not bonding. So start throwing some numbers out there. Will you take a thousand? Will you take 500? Will you take 10,000? What's your payoff? Do you owe 150? Will you take 150? Start making offers, okay? Start flapping your jaw, talking to people, asking for leads, following up, and making offers. Fifth thing you got to do, and this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. After you've asked for the lead, you've talked to people, you've asked for the leads, you've followed up, you've made an offer, and you've come to a verbal agreement with your seller as to what they'll take and what you're willing to pay, now we're going to marry these two and we're going to sign the paperwork. Okay? Until now, it's all fun. It, it's just been flapping our jaw. Now we're going to get the contract signed that says they agreed that they would take this price. I agreed that I would pay this price. Woo! Boof! 
now we have a deal. Now we've signed on the bottom dotted line. We put our name on it. But let me tell you, do not freak out about step five because just because you sign your name to something, I don't know a contract in the world that doesn't have two or three out clauses. If you can't get the financing, fine. If the house doesn't pass inspection, fine. If the land won't perk, fine. We're out of the deal. No harm, no foul. You have to talk to people, you have to ask for leads, you have to follow up, you have to make offers, and then you have to sign the paperwork. Don't freak out about signing the paperwork. There's plenty of out clauses. There's out clauses for you, there's out clauses for your seller, but ultimately we want to get this deal done, so let's just do the damn thing and sign the paperwork. Okay? The sixth thing, after we've got the paperwork signed, We've got to start advertising the property, and this is the absolute, well, I don't say this is the most fun that you'll have, but you definitely want to charge your phone when you start advertising the property, and again, it doesn't take any money to start advertising the property. You've all got a phone. You've got a smartphone, okay? Maybe you've even got an iPhone, a fancy iPhone. I'm an Android girl. I don't need that apple juice. So you take a picture of the house. You take a picture of the front, the back, and the inside if you can. The houses I've been buying this year, I haven't even been going inside. Ugh, afraid I'd fall through the floors. Ugh. Okay, so <coughs> take a picture. Post the picture on Facebook, Craigslist, Zillow, uh, and maybe send it to your Sunday school class. Put it in your email list. All right, that's it. You put the property out there. You say, hey, y'all, I've got this deal. And people will start calling you. The seventh thing you're going to do after you've advertised, the seventh thing is you're going to find buyers. And this is when you really need your phone charged because people are going to start calling you. Hey, I saw your picture on Facebook. Hey, I saw your picture on Craigslist. Hey, I got your advertisement on Zillow. What can we do? I saw that you were advertising the house for this, will you take that? I saw that you were asking this much for rent, will you take that? If you are renting it, how much do you need down? Is it the first month? Is it security deposit? Is it six months in advance? Is it an option fee down? Whatever it is, you've got to start finding buyers. And the way you do that is by advertising the property. You can do all sorts of other things to advertise if you want to, but to get the buyers, you have to start advertising. If you get a contract on a property and you don't put it out there in the world, then nobody knows it's available. All right? You have to advertise it. And then step two of that, step seven of the process, is to find buyers. All right. Now, <clears throat> step eight is fun. I love step eight because step eight says that now that we've found our buyers, and we know how much they're going to pay for the property. We know what kind of repairs they want done. We know, you know what kind of payment terms they want or when they want to pay. Maybe they want to close in seven days. Maybe they want to close in 60 days. You know, We don't know all this in the beginning. We get an idea. We get an agreement with our seller. But in step eight, we go back to our seller and renegotiate. You weren't ready for that, were you? You thought the negotiations were over. No, 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 no. The negotiations are never over. Well, not until the fat lady sings, all right? Not until we get to closing are the negotiations over. Because, think about it like this. You could go back and renegotiate better terms for your seller. Maybe you promise not to give them any money. But if you know that there's money coming in, then you can go back and you can say, hey, I'm going to give you some money. But if I give you money up front, I want to pay less every month. Or if I give you money up front, I want to pay less on the total purchase price. Or, you know, I find out that I can do more. I can give you more on the total purchase price, but I need another five years to get the deal done. Whatever happens, once you find those buyers in step seven, in step eight, go back to your seller and say, hey, I got a bird in the hand. Instead of two in the bush, let's deal with the bird in the hand. This is what they've proposed. This is what I think I can do. This is how I'm going to make money. This is what you're going to get. And most of the time, the sellers are going to love it. Most of the time, they're not going to say no. 
because some way or another they can see where they're going to get a better benefit out of this. And if they do say no and they won't renegotiate, then fine. Go back to your buyer and renegotiate with them. All right? That's it. All right, now step nine of this process. We're doing a 10-step process here uh, to buy houses. And step nine... I'm having a hard time deciding if 9 comes before 10 or if 10 comes before 9, but then we swoop it in together. So just work with me here. Step 9 is to collect the money. You got to pay to play, buddy. All right. If you have a tenant buyer or a buyer that says that they're going to give you X amount and they're going to do this and that they promise everything's going to be hunky dory, tell them to show you the money. When they show you the money, you can put it into your attorney's escrow account, you can put it in your escrow account, you can put it into a, a secure checking account. Collect that money. Get a paper trail of where that money came from. And it is safer if you put it in your attorney's escrow account. But keep, have them front the money because hoping and promising that they're going to send you money that don't work. And in regular real estate, they get earnest money checks. So this is normal. We call them option fees. But we get, um, in regular real estate, you get pre-approval letters, you get certified funds from the bank, you get all sorts of stuff that says, yes, this money is here and available. When we're talking about lease options, we don't have that privilege of having that pre-approval letter and that bank and that you know person out in the ivory tower that's promising this deal is gonna go. So we have to have our buyers, our tenant buyers, bring the money, honey. Once you have the money, once you've renegotiated the contract, once you know everything's good to go, that's step 10. And we close the deal. I don't bother my attorneys or my attorney, depending on which county I'm in, I don't bother them until I've renegotiated, until I've negotiated and renegotiated with my seller, until I've negotiated, renegotiated, collected money, and screened my tenant buyer. I've approved their application, and I have paperwork for both sides, and I know where the deal is. Then I take all of that paperwork, all of those paper trails, and I give it to my attorney, and he attorneys it. All right. It starts out with, you know, a page or two or three of a contract and it turns into like 15 or 20 pages after he, you know, puts all those big fancy attorney words to it. My sellers love the way I do real estate. They, I've had sellers tell me before that this was the easiest transaction they've ever done. This is the easiest closing. This was the simplest way to do real estate. My tenant buyers love it. They don't see any kind of deal or issue or problem until they're ready to get their mortgage. And then they realize how easy it is to actually work with me to do a lease option or a rent to own. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing for your seller for your tenant buyer and for you. And it only takes 10 steps. Wee! 10 steps. It's a 10 step process to buying houses and closing deals. I've uh, got a PDF that I'll share on this later. So if you have any questions, send them to me. I would love to talk to you about deals. Um, you know, I focus on lease options, owner financing, uh, lease purchases, rent to own, uh, subject to wraps, you know, creative financing. That's my whole little world. That's the lane that I'm in. That's where I'm driving. And that's what I can teach you how to do. Okay. I've got May's group coaching program starting next Tuesday. That's six days. You got six days to get in and get signed up so that all 10 of these steps, because you really need them broken down. I mean, it's cute that I'm going to give you a PDF and that we've got all these 10 steps and I've just ran through it in like 15 minutes. But what you actually need is the step by step, step by step plan, guide, strategy to getting the thing done. And that's what I'll teach you in the program. This is just a little 
sneak peek, a little teaser, if you will. So go to WhitneyNicely.com, Whitney like Houston, nicely like nicely done auctions, WhitneyNicely.com, and I've got the program up there, I've got um, a little pink button that says book a call with me, and I've got tons of time this week to talk, so if you want to get started, if you want to buy houses, because, I mean, when did I talk about money in this situation? Exactly. You don't have to have a lot of money. You don't have to have, well, actually, I think, you know, hiring me to teach you how to do it is the most expensive part of this situation. <laughs> uh, attorneys aren't expensive because we're going to use the tenant buyer's money to pay for them. And buying the houses, the sellers don't really want anything. Um, if you find the right sellers, if you find uncooperative sellers, then they want the moon and the stars and everything else. But I'm going to teach you how to get in front of all these other sellers. And actually, if you do what steps one, two, and three that I just showed you in this video, and you do them 10 times a day, then all the sellers that you're ever going to need are going to be right there, and you've spent no money, no money, to find them. All right, y'all go to WhitneyNicely.com. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll uh, attach the PDF here later, and I will see y'all later. Let me know if you have any questions. WhitneyNicely.com. Bye, y'all.